Have you ever asked yourself the question, why do people all over the world read the Bible? Why is it the best-selling book of all time? Why is it so popular? Well, there's some good answers to that. The Bible is fascinating. It's interesting. It's challenging. It deals with the big issues of life. And perhaps the main reason, many people feel like God speaks through the, the, the words of this book. God speaks through the Bible. To be honest, some parts of the Bible are very easy to understand, while other parts are extremely complicated. We want to offer you in grasping God's Word a reliable, clear, trustworthy way of, of reading and understanding and living out God's Word. Right now, some of you may feel like, I've read the Bible most of my life, and I still don't completely understand uh, what much of the Bible means. And that's because I think our method sometimes fails us. Many of us approach the Bible, you might say, with an intuitive or feels right approach. We simply read the text and we conclude whatever we're thinking or feeling at the time. Others might use a spiritualized approach. We want to force the details of the Bible to have some kind of spiritual lesson for us. And sometimes it's, it's just not quite that way. It works out a bit differently. We believe the whole Bible to be spiritual, but a spiritualizing approach to reading the Bible is sometimes faulty. Some of us just shrug our shoulders and sort of give up. We want to understand the Bible, but our method of reading and applying the Bible simply fails us. We offer you in Grasping God's Word a clear and concise, reliable method of reading and understanding and applying the Bible. Let's talk for a minute about the basics of the interpretive journey. First, I want to give you an overview. As you look at this chart of the journey, this picture, uh, we, I think we really can see where the journey is going. So as you look at the overview, it sort of works like this. Um, the metaphor of a journey is one that we use to help people understand how to read and understand, interpret, apply the Bible. We begin with their town. We begin with them, with the ancient audience, with what was going on back then. Then we try to grasp what are the differences between us and, and that culture. Uh, all kinds of differences. We'll talk about more in a moment. And then we, we look for the theological bridge that can help us cross that river of differences. And then we consult the biblical map, which in a sense helps us to correlate different theological principles with the rest of the Bible. And finally, we apply the Bible in our town. That is an overview of the journey. Now let's look more closely at each step of the interpretive journey. We begin with step one, their town. What did the text mean to the biblical audience? To complete step one, we need to read the text carefully. We need to make observations. We need to understand the historical context, the literary context. And finally, we want to synthesize the meaning of, of, of the passage we're studying for the biblical audience. What did it mean to them? So you would use some kind of past tense statement. Next, step two, is you measure the width of the river that you have to cross. We begin to identify some common differences. Differences in culture, differences in language, perhaps differences in situation. What were they facing? the time difference, and then the covenant difference. We want to focus on any unique differences within our passage, and usually these will be cultural differences. And finally, we want to ask, if we're studying the Old Testament, how does the New Testament relate to what we're studying in the Old Testament? That's step two. Step three is crossing the principalizing bridge. And here we ask the question, what is the theological point? What is the central message of this passage? To complete step three, you'll want to recall any differences between us and the biblical audience that we identified in step two. Then you'll want to also identify any similarities between the biblical audience and 
contemporary life. Finally, as you, in, as you hold these differences and similarities together, really in light of these differences and similarities, you want to identify a broad theological principle, theological point, the theological message of this passage. Write out the theological message using present tense verbs. Sometimes you'll write out a principle and you wonder, is this really what uh, I'm supposed to be doing? So here are some guidelines to help you to know how uh, to write out a principle or whether the principle you've written is, is valid. First of all, is it actually reflected in the text? Sometimes we'll write out principles and we look at them later and we think, the text doesn't have anything to say about that. Secondly, is it timeless and not tied to a specific situation? Next, is it culturally bound? If you write out a principle that simply relates to one culture or the other, then you've not captured the principle. And the one I like best is the last one because it sort of captures many of the, of the uh, other guidelines, and that's this. Your principle should be relevant to both the biblical audience and to us. And as I teach students how to write out principles, this is the one I rely upon the most. Step four is a pretty basic step, and it's simply this. How does what you've come up with relate to the rest of the Bible? So you'll simply want to ask yourself that question. Is my theological principle one that correlates with the rest of Scripture? Uh, if I'm studying in the Old Testament, I need to run that principle through the grid of New Testament teaching. And then finally, step five. Here you will... You'll get excited because you're thinking, how now can we apply this? You're grasping the text in our town. And the question is, how should individual Christians apply the message of Scripture that you have discerned and discovered uh, in your passage? There are some guidelines. Um, you'll want to apply your passage in a very specific situation to, to Christians today. The exciting thing is that even though the Bible has a meaning for both the ancient audience and us, there are many applications, numerous applications, because we're all different. Um, as you begin to think about how our situation parallels the ancient situation, you will begin to think of ways to apply the scriptures. And it, it gets pretty exciting when you realize all this work that I've done now I can finally make sense of it. Throughout Grasping God's Word, we use the interpretive journey to give you a reliable and trustworthy guide to reading, understanding, and applying the Bible. As I've talked to you about the five steps of the journey, if you're like me, you're asking, I understand the theory, but I'm not really sure how this works. So you need an example. We're going to turn to Joshua chapter 1 and take the first nine verses of Joshua 1 through the five steps of the journey. First of all, let me simply read the text. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The first thing we need to do is, step one, grasp the text in their town. 
So as you study the text carefully, as you think about the historical context and the literary context, and you do all these observations, then you will write out a past tense statement summarizing what the text meant for the biblical audience, a statement such as this. The Lord commanded Joshua, the new leader of Israel, to draw strength and courage from God's empowering presence, to be obedient to the law of Moses, and to meditate on the law so that he would be successful in the conquest of the promised land. That's step one. Step two, you measure the width of the river. You ask yourself, how are we different from the biblical audience? Well, we're not the nation of Israel. We're not the leaders of the nation of Israel. We're not crossing a river into the promised land, and we're under a different covenant. Those are some major differences, and you'll want to keep those in mind as you move through the rest of the interpretive journey. In step three, then, we will cross the principalizing bridge. We will try to bridge our way over this river of differences to understand what that passage means to us. There's some things that we have in common with the biblical audience, as well as differences. Uh, we, too, are members of God's people. God is present with us. He calls us to places of leadership. He calls us to challenging tasks. He requires obedience. So in light of these similarities and these differences, you might want to write out a present tense statement that captures the theological point of your passage, a statement such as this. To be effective in serving God and successful in the task to which he's called us, we must draw strength and courage from his presence. We must also be obedient to God's word, meditating on it constantly. In step four, we'll consult the biblical map. And in this step, you simply ask, how does my principle relate to the rest of the Bible? You don't want to develop a theological principle that is clearly contradicted elsewhere in Scripture. In the case of Joshua 1, we think that the principle relates extremely well to the rest of the Bible. God does promise his presence. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit mediates his presence. God also exhorts his people to, to meditate upon Scripture. And finally, in step five, we will grasp the text in our town. This is the application phase. How should individual Christians today live out the theological meaning of Scripture? Um, what are some ways that, that we can apply this or live this out in our lives? And as you think about God's presence, you might want to ask yourself, do I experience God's presence in a real way today? If not, what do I need to do about that? Do I need to make sure that I'm very consistent in meeting with God's people? Do I need to pour out my heart to God in prayer and be honest with Him and not play games with Him? Do I need to spend some time uh, writing down my thoughts, perhaps journaling some of my thoughts as I read Scripture? Another part of this theological principle is the exhortation to meditate upon Scripture. Am I really doing that? Sometimes we assume that we're meditating upon Scripture and thinking about Scripture when perhaps we're not as much. Um, maybe you want to spend some time this year reading through the whole Bible. Perhaps you want to begin a new Scripture memory program. Maybe you do want to take journaling more seriously. But what you can see is that there are many ways that you can live out or apply the message of Scripture that we've discovered in Joshua 1. To conclude this chapter, let me just say a word about how the interpretive journey is connected to the rest of grasping God's Word. How did we uh, organize the book, if you will? We begin in part one with some basic tools. We want to teach you how we got the Bible and how to read the Bible carefully, looking at sentences and paragraphs and discourses. Uh, so just giving you some basic tools for reading the Bible in part one. In part two, we're going to talk about context, the historical context, the world of the Bible, the literary context, how to understand how the different parts of a passage fit together, and then shifting to our context. What are our presuppositions? What are our assumptions? And then we throw word studies into that section as well. Then in part three, we're going to talk about some issues related to Bible interpretation that uh, are important but not often discussed. What is meaning? 
Who controls meaning, the author or the reader? What about the role of the Holy Spirit? And we'll talk a great deal more in that section about application. Then in part four, we discuss how you read the New Testament, and in part five, how you read the Old Testament. Then to conclude grasping God's Word, we, we offer you some extra discussion on very significant topics in our appendices. We have a discussion about inspiration and canon. We talk to you about how to write an exegetical paper. And if you're in school, your professor will love that section, and you may not so much, but it offers you a lot of guidelines about how to write a paper. And finally, we talk to you about how to build a personal library. We have about 40 pages of bibliography that will help you know which resources are reliable and trustworthy and give you a way of uh, putting those in one place and, and you'll know what to look for. Some of you have read the Bible your whole life and you've struggled to find a way of understanding it. In grasping God's Word, we give you a clear, concise, reliable method of reading, understanding, and interpreting, and living out and applying God's Word. You know, there's not many things much more exciting than digging into Scripture and, and realizing that God has spoken to you and you understand it. And you've listened and you've heard it. And now you can live out what the creator of the universe has said to you through his word.